Welcome to New Hampshire's Business. I'm Fred Cope. The average number of people uh, in New Hampshire not working because they're taking care of a child who's not in school and not in child care um, is just a bit over 17,200. That's according to a Census Bureau uh, household pulse survey. I had to look at that. And the New Hampshire Economic and Labor Information Bureau. And most of those not working in order to take care of a child are women. And let's look at this graph and it tells the story. Look at those bottom two lines. The bottom line is 35 to 44, women 35 to 44, the one just above it, women 25 to 34. And, uh, and you can see over to the far right as the uh, lines go down. Uh, and then up above the top two lines are men uh, who were inf affected, but not as much. And then look at this next graph. What would happen if the female uh, labor force participation increased? And you can take a look and see what uh, that would do. Services is the big one, and that's mostly health care and social services, then retail and wholesale, right below it, government, which is primarily education, construction, finance, insurance, real estate, and manufacturing. With me to talk about this is uh, Jackie Cowell, who is executive director of New Hampshire Coalition for Business and Education and executive director of New Hampshire Early Learning. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. And Tim Singh, who is the president of the Greater Concord Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Tim. Great to be here, Fred. Thanks. Uh, Jackie, um, you're a leader of uh, children's programs in New Hampshire. What's your take on uh, the child care dilemma right now? Well, the child care dilemma really is facing families in terms of their inability to access um, child care, both from a, a point of view of availability, are the slots there? Is there a child care shortage and affordability? And so um, what we're looking at, you know, is pre-pandemic, there was always, there was a shortage. It was tough. It was tough to afford. It was tough to find. But now it's really tough. And what's happening on the ground is that um, programs themselves are facing a shortage of staffing, of workforce. Mm -hmm. right. so there's a, the inability to bring families in because they're following certain health protocols, perhaps fewer lower enrollment purposefully for health reasons, but also now because of this workforce shortage, programs are actually closing down classrooms, classrooms they already have, classrooms they have a waiting list for, and they can't do it because they don't have the staff. Tim, uh, the health wanted ads that we see all over the state uh, are directly connected to this dilemma that we just talked about. Um, what's your take on it? Well, as Jackie had said, the, it's, all, it's all going back to workforce. Pre-COVID, the biggest complaints we were hearing from employers in New Hampshire was the lack of workforce and the, the challenges of talent recruitment. And two things feeding that, two of the, I think the biggest things feeding that are the low housing inventory, high cost of housing, as well as childcare options. Um, it's expensive, particularly if you're trying to recruit young professionals. These folks are, you know, they're having kids they're not at their peak earning point in their, in their career yet, but if you have two or more kids, that's a pretty expensive proposition, and it's very, very hard to uh, justify um, you know, putting kids in childcare and spending most of your salary just to do that. Now, here's a graph that shows the change in New Hampshire's gross state uh, product in the billions if the labor force participation of women ages 25 to 54 increased just by 10,000. Look at that graph, and you can see it goes up, up, up from the year 2022 to 2031. That number, 10,000, remember the number I said at the beginning, 17,200, uh, not working? If we just added 10,000, not the 17, just the 10, that's the kind of impact it would have in New Hampshire. Any comments from either one of you on that? But you need to workforce. So to bring those 17,000 in, you're going to need the workforce there. And so yep. that's the child, the difference with the child care industry is it's the workforce that supports the other workforces. So let's come together as a state and really try to solve this. Real quick, Tim. Well, for every uh, position that can't be filled in child care, that translates in licensed facilities about 12 kids that, that are not going to be served. And that translates to 12 parents that can't get back into the workforce. Uh, I know you're, you're both leaders, and I know you deal with it all the time in your own where you sit, uh, as so many others do. My thanks to Jackie Cowell, Executive Director of the New Hampshire Coalition for Business and Education and Executive Director of New Hampshire Early Learning, and Tim Sink, President of the Greater Concord Chamber of Commerce.